affected region. The radiations from that particular two regions are the responsible for the vibrational uh, spectrum. Now, what is the vibrational spectrum? The, that can that kind of uh, transitions. The spectrum we can we can uh, get the spectrum after the transitions. So, vibrational spectrum we can get after the vibrational transitions. Now, what is the vibrational transition that I will discuss in later slides? So, this part is clear that electromagnetic spectrum is having different parts. We are focusing on the infrared region. And infrared region is having three different parts that is near, mid, and far. Now, let's start with the spectroscopy. So, basically, the IR spectroscopy is having uh, many plus points, many advantages that it can fulfill the demand of the uh, improvement of any product's quality. We can check any uh, quality of any food products in, uh, in a fraction of a second in a very few time with this instrument, that IR spectroscopy. And uh, we can easily improve that product after the checking uh, after the robust checking of that uh, food product with the help of an IR spectroscopy. It is also a very uh, rapid and non-destructive reliable technique as because it is uh, taking very small time to estimate the quality parameters of any food. And also it is non-destructive because uh, we don't have to destroy that food with, uh, with any chemicals or any chemical analysis nothing else we just we have to just put the samples to the sample holder of the uh, infrared spectrometer and it will it will take very very short time uh, within fraction of a second it will give you the entire result of the quality parameters and also it can emphasize on the it can be emphasized on the food safety so if if the quality parameter if the food quality parameters is taking in the picture the automatically the food safety uh, can be placed over there because the food safety is uh, none other uh, related to the food quality on. Now this is a pictorial presentation that uh, the where the infrared re, infrared radiations comes from. Basically, the sun, which is the source of all kind of radiations. So from the sun, we can get the infrared region. So our uh, main focus is on the near infrared region. So near infrared regions, these uh, radiations of the near infrared regions can be responsible for the near infrared spectroscopy, which is a rapid, non-destructive, reliable technique without the need of any sample preparation. Now, the NIR spectroscopy. Now, what is the NIR spectroscopy? The full form of this NIR spectroscopy is the near infrared spectroscopy so basically the spectroscopy terms uh, the spectroscopy term comes from the interaction between the electromagnetic radiation with the matter now here what is the matter we are talking about the food safety or uh, food uh, or the food quality right so here the matter is the food so for example we can uh, we can uh, predict a quality of any mango or predict a quality of any fruit. So we just have to put a fruit, an intact fruit. We don't have to cut that fruit. We don't have to extract the pulp, nothing else. We just have to uh, place that fruit, fruit to the uh, spectrometer. And the spectra from uh, coming from the source, it will directly interact with the that that uh, matter or that food material or that fruit uh, anything else so after that interaction there will be some kind of uh, vibrations with the molecule with the food molecules because there are some uh, ir active molecules present in every food food materials so that molecules can absorb this kind of radiations and it will uh, shown a spectra. Now, what kind of spectra we can get that I will show you. And the region of that near infrared spectra is uh, lying from the 800 nanometer to 
2500 nanometer so this is particularly the regi uh, region in terms of wavelength so the wavelength of the infrared uh, radiations uh, the, the infrared rays which is having the wavelength of 800 nanometer to 2500 nanometer and the now the fourth point that is the based on molecular overtone and combinations now the transition of the spectra the transition of the uh, light from one vibrational level to another vibrational level that can have a result of overtone or combination vibrations now the quantitative measurements we can have the quantitative measurements of the uh, quality parameters like for any food product we can uh, we want to know the carbohydrate content of any any food material so uh, with the help of that uh, that technology that is nir spectroscopy with the help of nir spectroscopy we can uh, have an idea about the uh, approximate idea about the carbohydrate content present in uh, any food material or any 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 other any other uh, property we can uh, get from this technology now this is the principle how near infrared spectroscopy works as i have told you earlier that there is an interaction between light and the food material matter uh, so we can consider matter here as of any food material so after the interaction absorbance will be there now what kind of absorbance like if i am uh, i am telling you if there is a uh, triatomic molecule you can see that uh, there is a symmetric stretching and there is a asymmetric stretching so with the nature of stretching we can uh, bifurcate the molecules that what kind of stretching or what kind of vibration they can they can be shown so this is the symmetrical stretching because the vibration is going with the same in the same way but in the asymmetrical stretching the vibration is going with the opposite way so the molecule is basically vib vibrating with their minimum energy but if their frequency matches with the frequency of the uh radiation coming from the nir source if they will match then only that molecule absorb those radiations and whenever that molecule absorb those kind of radiations it will show some dip or it will show some uh peaks that we will get at the spectral at the spectral images so basically after the absorbance of the uh, radiations it will shown the final spectra now what kind of molecules can be absorbed there are some ir active molecules the some diatomic molecules like ch sh oh nh there is some uh, hydrogen bonds with carbon sulfur oxygen and nitrogen those are some ir active uh, near infrared active molecules which can uh, absorb the radiations of the uh, ir uh, ir uh, rays uh, at at a frequency at that kind of frequency we can we can uh, say those are the resonant frequencies now basically this is a, a pictorial presentation of the uh, molecules or the diatomic molecules so let's let's uh, let's have an example of uh, hcl that there is a diatomic molecule of hcl that in one part that is hydrogen in another part that is chlorine so if there is a, there is a diatomic uh, in, internuclear distance is there and we we can we can uh, we can relate with that internuclear distance with a spring so if we compress if we compress those uh two molecules it will compressed if we stretch those molecules it will stretch so this is basically uh, the nature of the vibrations of the molecules so this is the diatomic molecules 
it is uh, it will uh, it will uh, it will uh, in 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 a translation in a translation way it will vibrate but in this case this is a triatomic molecule now see these are the three different uh, propagation of light so if uh, consider we, we can consider that there are three different different uh, sample holders and we 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 can we can put the sample over there so after that what nir will do so in the first picture that the nir ray the nir radiation comes from the source and it will transmit transmit through the sample so there are basically three kind of propagation so first one is transmittance so in transmittance the nir ray comes and it will transmit through the sample the second one is reflectance that it will not touch to the sample but it will reflect from the surface of the sample it will just uh, uh, reflect from the surface of the sample it will not cross the sample holder or not cross this uh, cross throughout the sample now the final one is the transflectance so the transflectance is the sample will gone through the the light will gone through the sample and it will reflect to the detector now in the right side th that there is a pictorial presentation of the transitions that if the transition will occur from level 1 to level 2 so what are the level different levels here the v equals to 1 v equals to 2 v equals to 3 those are the different uh, different levels of the uh, vibration different vibrational levels so in the vibrational levels if the spectra will come after the transition from 1 to 2 that kind of radiation is known as the fundamental radiations but if the spectra comes after the transition from 1 to 3 or 1 to 4 or 1 to 5th level that kind of uh, radiations we are uh, we called as overtones so this is again in the left this is a pictorial presentation which i have told you in the last slide so absorption in near infrared region arises from the change in vibrational energy of the molecules those are the energy levels so if there will be a change in vibrational energy we will have the as a result the nir spectrum so nir is sensitive to the molecules containing ch nh oh sh molecules and those are the infrared ir active molecules now coming to the research part that this is a data extracted from the scopus database so in that data there are there are a research which i have done on the infrared spectroscopy to qualitative and quantitative analysis of mango in my phd i have done this kind of studies that uh, i have estimated the different quality parameters of mango fruit uh, with the help of nir spectroscopy so during my research that i have uh, collected this kind of data that there are some articles on the uh, nir spectroscopy to dissolve the uh, challenges of to estimate the quality parameters of mango and less studies have been done on the nir spectroscopic study of the indian mangoes so there are number of uh, there are number of species of, of indian mangoes is there but very less have been uh, studied uh, for the quality quality parameter estimation or for the for, or for the model development the model development is a new term so nir spectroscopy is basically giving the providing the basic uh, primary data 
so with the help of this kind of primary data we can uh, we can predict the statistical models to estimate the final properties of any food food products so in india uh, there is very very minimum articles are there on the uh, nir spectroscopic study to resolve the problems of the or uh, to uh, to estimate the uh, mango the properties of mango so that can be a future future work that uh, this this uh, field can be more uh, more expanded or more explored in the indian mangoes now the instrumentation is coming to the instrumentation these are the this is the picture uh, these are the pic pictures of the nir spectrometer basically and uh, we have collaborated with the csio chandigarh lab for our research work so this is basically a metrohum nir spectrometer and uh, we, you can say you can see this this is the sample holder in the right hand side picture this is a sample holder where we have uh, we have put the mango pulp and after the analysis of the mango pulp we got some spectral uh, we got some nir spectra so during this experimentation we uh, did not destroy the mango pulp so after the experiment you can use this mango pulp as it is before the before your experimentation so this is the benefit of basically this is the benefit of near infrared spectroscopy so you can you can use any any kind of uh, food materials any kind of foods or any kind of you can say oils polymers paints any kind of medicines you can use for the experimentation but after the experimentation you can use your sample uh, which we cannot in the uh, in the analytical techniques so because if we want to know the quality we want to check the quality parameters of mango we we have to we have to put some chemicals over there so and after some uh, like for for uh, fat fat concentration if we want to know the fat concentration of uh, this uh, mango pulp we have to put the anhexen uh, with the samples and we have to boil the samples so after that uh, we will have some residues i have done in my phd work this kind of uh, so so you 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 have to you have to develop a model have to develop a statistical model so for the statistical model this that statistical model will give you the results in future so for the statistical model this near infrared spectrometer is giving the primary data because without the near infrared spectroscopic data uh, you cannot uh, develop a statistical model to estimate the quality parameters of any any product any food products or any polymers or any material you can say any biomaterials so for that kind of uh, research what is the basic need the basic need that in that in our sample there should be some ir active molecules so if we we, we take some sample that uh, which is not having the ir active molecules it will not show it will not giving any any kind of a spectra so it will just it, it, we will just have a, a straight line uh, after uh, after our result in, in our computer screen we will have just a straight line we will not having any kind of dip or any kind of peaks or any kind of band we will not uh, have because that sample is not having the uh, ir uh, active molecules so the basic uh, the basic uh, condition for this kind of uh, technology uh, the basic condition it is that uh, the sample should have the ir active molecules so so and the benefit of this kind of uh, technology is there is no uh, sample preparation so we don't have to put any chemicals uh, uh, to the to our samples and after that after the experimentation we will have the we will have our samples as it was uh, before the experimentation so we can we can eat the those food products if we are uh, if we are uh, doing the experimentations so we, we can eat those 
uh, food products or we can use those food products after the NIR spectrometer experimentation. So that's all for the this kind of uh, technology. Now I am uh, I'm just uh, giving you with, uh, giving you a brief overview of the different parts. So this is the this is basically a integrated part of a this is basically an integrated part of uh, the spectrometer the instrument. So in that instrument, what different different parts are there that I will uh, show you. So basically, uh, there are some parts. There are one, two, three, four, five. There are five different parts. So first is the source. So source is the basic or it is the most important part because we are without NIR source, uh, we cannot have any, any kind of spectrum. So the source is there. Then a collimating lens is there. So it will. So what is the what is the need of that lens? So it will basically uh, give a direction of the source, direction of the source to the filters. So in in the filters there are some different different uh, filters which are having different colors. So if there is a red color of filter in the filter, the red color filter will absorb the red color only. And it will emit the other colors. So this is basically the role of filters that the filter will absorb the single wavelength and it will emit the other wavelengths. So after that, that light will fall on the sample. So after that, the light will fall on the sample and the sample will absorb that particular light. Then it will transmit that i have told you earlier no, that, that there are uh, different three different uh, modes that is transflectance transmittance and reflectance so it will transmit through the sample and uh, detector will detect the sample and it will uh, show to the computer screen the graph will the spectra will show now the details of the each block now first uh, first one is the radiation source now uh, in the source we can uh, that i have uh, i have told you earlier that the uh, natural source of the ir radiation is sun uh, but we cannot use the sun in the laboratory for the instrumental purpose so we have used the halogen tungsten uh, lamps which are uh, having the particular wavelengths of 780 nanometer to 2 2500 nanometers so the tungsten halogen bulb can be used as a source of nir radiations because the radiations which uh, they have emit uh, those are having the particular wavelength of 780 to 2500 nanometer so these are the source of the ir radiation now the dispersing elements that uh, in this schematic diagram i have told you about the dispersing elements that monochromators can be used or the filters can be used or the diffraction grating can be used because we just need to focus on some particular wavelengths so we will have to use some some kind of elements which can pass some particular wavelengths so that it will uh, so that the sample can absorb the particular wavelengths which they need if the all all uh, spectra will be sorry the all light or all radiation the total range if the total ra range will be passed through that uh, uh, through that sample then it will very much we will get very much complex uh, spectra so basically to reduce the complexity we have to use some monochromators or we have to use some filters or gratings so that we can have the particular wavelengths for the different different samples now the sample holder this is also important part because uh, for the samples we have to hold the samples so in uh, in sample holder we can use the quartz cuvette or the dish sample holder or the liquid sample holders Oh, those holders can can be made with the, the silica glass 
now the detectors. So the detectors are the device that senses the light. So this senses the light uh, because the light comes from the sample. It should be sensed with the detectors. Then only they can detect the signals and it will convert into the spectra or the spectrum and convert light signals to the voltage or the current. So the material used for these uh, photo detectors, that can be silicon detectors on the, or the um, indium gallium arsenide detectors or the PBS detectors. Now, the most important part that is application of IR spectroscopy. So, the near infrared spectroscopy is having a very vast and broad application in many fields. Here I have chosen particular for the, uh, the for the food materials because uh, I have worked on the fruits and vegetables. So I am focusing on the food materials, the application of near infrared spectroscopy on the food materials. Other than that, the we can apply the near infrared spectroscopy to resolve uh, or to estimate the uh, soil quality or to the presence of uh, presence of any parameter in soil in water in polymers in paints or you can you uh, we can use this uh, spectroscopic technique in the remote sensing so there are many fields that in uh, in which we can use so basically in food science what kind of foods are having the ir active molecules so we can have the grains cereals legumes the poultry and beef the meat and meat products the fruits and vegetables obviously the, the pharmaceutical and medical sciences and uh, in the oil industries the vegetable oils the food oils and the beverages that uh, the beverages to re resolve the problems of these kind of industries. So beverages is having a very broad industries, fruits as well, fruits and vegetables, pharmaceutical industries, and uh, the grain cereals. We can have some food products with the grains. We can we can make the biscuits. We can uh, make the cake from the grains. And the, from the cereals, so the uh, to check the quality parameter of those foods, we can use the near infrared spectroscopy. Now, the near infrared spectroscopy in agricultural or the food science. So, near infrared spectroscopy, you uh, using data collected by scanners and imaging provides non-destructive and accurate sensory and internal quality parameters analysis so basically what with the help of near infrared spectroscopy we can develop a non destructive method so that i have told you in earlier why non destructive because we are not destroy the sample after the experimentation and it is also a very accurate and sensory method and also we can check the internal quality of any food, any food external quality we can we can check the external quality of any food materials uh, by with our naked eyes only that if we if anyone is selling the uh, fruits uh, for example if anyone is selling the uh, watermelons or the uh, mango or the apple we can we can say we, we can go to market and also we can say that uh, no this fruit is not good because the shelf life is over because every every fruits or every fruit product is having some moisture content so has some water content so with uh, for, for this every food product is having some shelf life so if that shelf life is over the, that that the quality of that uh, fruit will uh, gone so we cannot take that uh, food as a good quality food uh, so some health issues can be will be there so that is why to uh, 
check the uh, internal quality of any uh, any food product we can use the nir spectrometer even many people have developed some portable hand uh, portable handy uh, nir spectrometer with which we can easily uh, check the quality of any any food product anywhere the real time analysis on site enabled by newer scanned base portable devices which i have told you in uh, Sir, you are not audible. हेलो डॉक्टर अंजीबा डॉक्टर अंजीबा आ रही है हेलो सर यू आर ऑडिबल बट आई थिंक वी कैन नॉट हेयर द स्पीकर ओ डॉक्टर अंजीबा आ रही है आज यू फिनिश डॉक्टर पार्टिसिपेंट्स ही नॉट एट ही ही गॉट डिस्कनेक्टेड
so participants till then if you have any question please write in the chat section and uh, then we will resume the session within one minute shortly Dr. Agniba will join soon. He got disconnected uh, because of poor network. He will be joining shortly. Uh, so till then participants you can uh, yeah uh, now we have our talk to a uh, like speaker over here we can start the expert program resume the expert program okay i'm sorry for there was some uh, internet connection error i'm sorry for that uh, am I audible? Uh, yeah, you are audible. You share your slides with me. Okay, okay. You are on the application uh, part. Okay, now coming to the application of uh, near infrared spectroscopy. Uh, I'm starting again with the part of application that <clears throat> the application of in we can apply this technology to uh, different. Uh, so the application part is very vast or very uh, uh, very broad, you can say. So, but I am focusing particularly on the uh, food science. So. We can apply the near infrared spectroscopy to the uh, pharmaceutical industries, uh, to the poultry and beef industry, to the uh, grain, cereals, and legumes, to the fruits and vegetables, to the oil industry, and to the beverage industry. So, other than that, other than that, we can also apply this kind of near infrared spectroscopy. This kind of application, we can apply this uh, technology to uh, to the polymer industries, to the uh, remote sensing, or uh, to to know the presence of any material in the uh, soil, in water. So uh, there are many many things, 
many applications uh, present for the near infrared spectroscopy but i have i have chosen particularly for the food materials so because i have studied uh, the quality estimation of the uh, fruits in, uh, during my phd work so the grain cereals and legumes so we can we can have the biscuits we can have the cake from the grain cereals and legumes and uh, also the the meat and the meat industry that poultry beef and the fruits and vegetables are also very much important because this is this is a daily needs of all of us the, again the pharmaceutical the medicines and the uh, drugs everything is very much important for our daily life and the oils which we can get from the vegetables or from the uh, you can say from the vegetables from the uh, fruits everything and the beverages also the beverages is also a very very much growing industries so we can apply the near infrared spectroscopy to the uh, to these industries as well now the nir application in the agriculture and food science basically so the near infrared spectroscopy using data collected by scanners and imaging provides non destructive and accurate sensory and internal quality parameter analysis so uh, as i have told you earlier that the quality estimation of any food product cannot be cannot use directly with the data of uh, data of the near infrared spectroscopy we will have to uh, make some statistical models so for that statistical model nir uh, spectroscopic data is a very much important primary data so without help of any kind of spectroscopic data we cannot uh develop any kind of statistical model to estimate the qualities or to uh, to check the qualities of any food product so the um, primary data has been collected from the, the data has to collected from the near infrared spectrometer and with that data we can have a model which can be developed as a non destructive technique as this is giving the accurate results uh, as we can get from the uh, destructive analytical techniques the traditional techniques like so to know if we want to know the fat content present in any uh, fruit uh, so in in my phd work which i i want to share a, a experience that in my phd work i just want to uh, that that time i i wanted to know the presence of fat content uh, in the mango pulp so what what i have done so there was some uh, traditional method that is soxlet method the chemistry people uh, know of chemistry or food science people know this this method is very uh, in very well nature so uh, what uh, i have to put some anhexane to the uh, sample and just we have to evaporate those sample so they have to heat up this sample so after the evaporation of that anhexane we just uh, got some uh, residues and have collected the residues as a uh, amount of uh, fat present in that particular uh, sample the mango pulp so after the experimentation the uh, sample was destroyed uh, because we have applied the anhexane we have heated up that sample so the the sample was totally uh, destroyed but if we put the sample uh, in the near infrared spectrometer and if we developed some model and we we knew that there were some particular wavelengths of near infrared spectrometer and we have already developed if we we we, we already developed some uh, instrument with the help of particular those uh, infrared radiations so we can we can have the result of the fat content present in the mango pulp very easily within a fraction of a second just we have to put the mango pulp into that particular uh, sample holder the radiation will come and it will uh, absorb the particular uh, wavelengths and will show that what kind of after applying that obviously after applying that statistical model it will uh, it will calculate the what kind of uh, what amount of fat present in the mango pulp and the second point is real time analysis on site 
enabled by new uh, newer scanned based portable devices has brought about the paradigm shift in quality control in the entire food supply chain so as we know every every food uh, food industry every food companies are having some departments that is quality control or quality assurance department so that that department particularly the uh, the function of the department is to uh, ensure the quality of every food product after the industrialization after the production so every product after the production they can um, they are having the they they have to check the quality control department have to check the qualities of that the quality parameters of that particular food products so for this uh, some portable nir instrument ha has been designed so and uh, also if we we if we went to market if we go to market and we want to uh, we want to uh, buy some apples so with our with our naked eyes we just uh, can have an idea that uh, some apples are good some apples are bad we just uh, but we don't know the uh, inner quality we know we don't know the internal quality of any fruit so that can be possible the outer quality is very the, the apple is very polished uh, so uh, in a, the, the looks is very good but in the in the inner quality the inner quality is not very good that can be possible so with the help of that uh, portable nir spectrometer we can have an idea that, that that fruit is matured or not the fruit is sweet or not so and the fruit is uh, the fruit is acidic or not that, no. that's all and the nir scanner applications are becoming increasingly common in the field for the estimation of maturity quality i have uh, told you i have many times i have told you that maturity quality the grading sorting part the grading sorting part is very important for the export import uh, business so just uh, if we are having a, a lot of a batch of uh, fruits so we just uh, check with the portable nir scanners uh, we, we 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 just scan the fruits whatever fruits are having very good it will it will shown uh, on the screen of the portable and ir uh, spectrometer that uh, these apples are not good these apples are good obviously some parameters were pre checked the pre set parameters were there and uh, that we they, they, we have to just check if the apples are not good we just have to throw it and uh, what what apples are good we have to we, we can send we can send for the export export purpose so these are the main applications uh, of the nir spectrometer for the food industries so the, it has it has resolved many challenges of the food industries so the nir imaging applications are more prevalent at large and local scales nowadays uh, very uh, many industries are using this kind of uh, applications now the data analysis part so as i have told you uh, the primary data uh, is giving uh, we can we, we can get from the nir spectrometer so after some data analysis only we can uh, have a regression model or have a statistical model so with the help of those models uh, statistical mod regression models we can uh, estimate the qualities or we can check the qualities of so only with nir data we cannot check the quality parameters of any food products so we just have to uh, make a statistical model for this so but the statistical to uh, to develop those statistical model the nir data is very much important as a primary data because without that data we cannot develop any model so after getting the raw spectrum for the from the uh, nir spectrometer we will have to uh, we will have we will have to gone through some process that is pre processing techniques principal component analysis and partial d square regression so the pre processing uh, techniques in the pre processing techniques uh, there are some uh, techniques like snv is there the multiplicative uh, scattering correction is there the first and first second third order derivative is there so what is the role of particular those pre processing techniques basically uh, we are getting a spectra like this i'm uh, let me show you this is my research result only 
that this is a spectra this is a raw spectra in very in very left this is a raw spectra of 50 samples so i have taken the 50 samples for the analysis this is a raw spectra of the 50 samples where uh, there are different peaks so now just uh, let, let me let me introduce the spectra that uh, in that spectra there are different peaks with that uh, at the different wavelengths so in 977 nanometer the peak uh, observed due to the third overtone of the ch stretching so at that 977 nanometer the uh, stretching was there the ch stretching was there and at that particular wavelength they have absorbed the nir uh, radiations and uh, they have shown this kind of peaks similarly in 1193 nanometer there was a peak due to the second overtone of the ch stretching and in 1457 nanometer there was the first overtone of nh stretching at the 1783 nanometer there is a small very small uh, very small peak is showing that is due to the first overtone of ch stretching and at 1927 nanometer there is a stretching uh, there is a uh, peak during the stretching of oh molecule so this this is a raw data this is basically a raw data which we have collected from the uh, NIR spectrometer directly, but it is having some scattering errors, some noises. So to eliminate those kind of errors, we will have to use these pre-processing techniques in the first point. So after applying those pre-processing techniques, we can have a uh, accurate uh, spectra which is having less errors. So this uh, pre-processed data is much more uh, applicable or much more useful for the final model development now the partial uh, so now the principal component analysis can uh, classify the data so which uh, particular wavelengths are important and uh, which particular wavelengths are not important and finally the partial least square regression is uh, making the regression model again the statistical analysis uh, so i have already told you the steps of statistical analysis and we have used the unscambler uh, software for these kind of uh, for this kind of uh, analysis so you can download this software from this link there is a link which i have i have shared so but this is not a free software uh, uh, but they can they can give you a trial version so after that you will have to buy this software to do this analysis so this software is basically uh, of the uh, the sold by the company that is kemo kemo has sold this software the software name is the unscambler x the software name is unscambler x so with this software you can do this kind of statistical analysis now the advantages coming to the advantages of near infrared spectroscopy in medical field that we cannot analyze analyze the glucose content or analyze the uh, some blood sugar through the through this uh, traditional technique so with the nir portable spectrometer we can have the idea of glucose present in our uh, blood within a fraction of a second now also this is a pictorial picture of the uh, soxlet method that i have told you for the fat analysis so we can uh, have the fat we can have the result of the fat contents present in cereals pulses or legumes or any food products or any fruits with the help of NIR spectrometer uh, in a fraction of a second. Uh, so it's a very rapid method and it's also a non destructive method. So this is a uh, picture for the NIR spectrometer which uh, have 
which have uh, analyzed the properties of the meat and the meat products. In this slide I, I have already explained to you. These are some literatures and uh, literatures about the uh, work is going on, what kind of work is going on uh, for particular this kind of applications. So in the first paper, they have done the maturity estimation of the different fruits that is apple, mango, grapes, peaches, pears and melons. So in this paper, they have discussed the, uh, the maturity of, the, uh, of these fruits with the NIR spectrometer in a uh, rapid uh, round respective way. In the second paper, the author have discussed about the NIR spectroscopy for the quality evaluation of fruits and vegetables also. In the third paper, the author have, authors have discussed about the application of near infrared spectroscopy to predict the meat quality product. This is basically a review paper. So if you, you if you, you will follow this paper, you can you can have an idea of what kind of meat and meat products are there and uh, what are the uh, properties of the meat product or the, the quality parameters are present in the meat products and how the near infrared spectroscopy can predict those quality parameters uh, for the non destructive analysis so in the fourth paper the authors uh, have discussed about a comparison of mid infrared and near infrared spectroscopy in polymer analysis so in this paper they have basically taken the uh, they can the two two different region which i have told you in the first or second slide that the near infrared uh, that the infrared region which is having different uh, three different uh, sub regions that is near mid and far infrared region so they have taken the mid infrared region as well as the near infrared region to check the qualities of the polymer uh, for polymers so basically the comparison was there and uh, the re as a result of that paper you can follow this paper so as a result of this paper they have uh, they have told that uh, near infrared spectroscopy is much more useful in the last paper the authors have discussed about again the um, different two different techniques that is mid infrared spectro spectrum spectroscopic technique and near infrared spectroscopic technique for assessing the amount or the presence of the amount of carbon stock in the soils so this is also a review paper you can follow to know the reliability of this technology to resolve the problems or challenges of different fields. Now, uh, this is a one kind of summary of the NIR technology. So, uh, farmers need basically a non destructive, accurate, rapid, and user friendly tools to use uh, on their farm to give them a detailed information on the physical and chemical properties of crops or uh, so as the crops are very important for the uh, food industries so and the farmers are the uh, backbone uh, of that industries because if they will not the uh, they will not produce the uh, crops we will not have as the raw material of the food industries so the farmers uh, need to introduce the farmers need to introduce with this technology and uh, they also need to monitor the maturity and quality of their products and near infrared technology which has been used for the last four decades provides vital agricultural solution but in the last decades it has uh, grown in a rapid way the application of this technology and the spectroscopic research is progressing rapidly as stockholders in the food industries so realize the benefits it brings to their value chain and NIR technology also can add value to any agricultural business in terms of production of the farm, the processing, logistics, service and marketing, giving them a competitive advantages. And it is also a significant process uh, in the spectral scanners and Im imagery, so which is now combined with the state of art chemometrics. So the chemometrics is basically uh, the statistical method which I have uh, discussed with you earlier. So in the chemometric techniques, we are taking the uh, basic, uh, we are taking the primary data from the analytical methods and from as well as from the 
near infrared spectroscopic method we combine the data and we are making the statistical models so finally the statistical models is applying in future for the non destructive uh, characterization of any food products simultaneously there has been minimization of technology uh, uh, miniaturization of uh, miniaturization of technology creating small portable devices more convenient to handle in the field like i have told you the uh, portable nir devices so so that the anyone can handle those uh, portable uh, instruments to the field to the farm to the greenhouses or any kind of laboratories because which uh, which uh, that uh, instrument we have used in our phd during our phd work that is not a handy product so we have to settle with a particular lab or particular area but if we are having if we have developed if we will develop any kind of portable instrument uh, so we can we can we can uh, just take that that instrument and uh, we can do the analysis anywhere uh, we can sit anywhere and we can do the analysis scientists are continuously finding new applications for the technology and particular for this kind of technology and recently there has been an explosion of near in, near infrared applications in every uh, every uh, part of the food production grains vegetables fruits animal rearing and the meat production as well so uh, this is uh, now this is the last but not the least slide that this is a, my uh, research team uh that uh, in the first there is dr neha munjal she is the assistant professor uh, of department of physics lovely professional university she is my research guide and uh, in the second one she is dr uma kamboj she is the assistant professor department of physics lovely professional university and uh, she is my research co guide and the in third uh, she is miss pavas she is the research scholar uh in department of physics lovely professional university so we are working as a team to resolve uh, the different challenges of the food food uh, industries uh, with the help of near infrared spectro spectrometer spectroscopy uh, i should i should say near infrared spectroscopy and if uh, if uh, you have any kind of questions any kind of challenges uh, during this kind of researches so you can reach out uh, us with our email ids i am providing my i have already provided my email ids uh, in this slide uh, thank you so much uh, that's all from my side uh, if any question you can ask also you can reach with me with that my email id that is agnibha1997 at the rate gmail.com thank you is there any question from the participants no questions from anybody all right uh, thank you dr agniva for uh, detailing about the infrared spectroscopy to our audience and today for some reasons very few have joined and no, no one is actually ha having any questions so that's very interesting anyways we we are uh, about to running out of the time so we sh we can conclude the session now thank you very very much once again thank you sir thank, thank you. you so i am just ending the session for everyone thank you very much